too dark, but it's just an idea, an illustration. And these were the photos of Janet Hornsey. So very good, uh, an interesting way of uh, approaching this type of set. Thank you very much, Janet. And now something entirely different, but same concept. Uh, only here, it's not uh, one artwork, but uh, the presentation of the artwork. And we have a very uh, moody photo, I would say. We can have a, there's a sense of depth, a sense of perspective. There's persons on the right. And you got a little bit of light on the hand. I hope you can see my cursor here, which makes it also much more intriguing. And you see very beautiful uh, inked washing drawings. And you're really intrigued to, to know where is this, what is this about? I think that the poles uh, on which the, the drawings are attached give you a very sense of, oh, oh, oh this is interesting. And so in the next photo, you even get a much better idea of the space and how it's been used for the presentations of these very delicate artworks. The play of every singular little light with the pole, very interesting. Once again, one figure in it here and the shades on the wall, it makes it all very, very intriguing. I also really like the grain in the photos that we have because you will see in the four photos there's a similar grain adding to a sense of mystery, a sense of, oh, I wish I was there, I wish I could see that. And I really like the composition here because it looks very random, but it's very well uh, framed, I believe. There's a lot of things happening, but it feels very natural. I really, really like this. And then we get a better close up of one of the drawings here. So you really get to appreciate the delicacy of the artwork itself, the, the paper with the, the very soft torn edge, like it's been torn there and cut on the other hand. Uh, and once again, two silhouettes here uh, that are enjoying the exhibition. And I really, really like, once again, the idea of, of having an idea of chaos and a shallow depth of field, so you can't really see what's going on <clears throat> on the other uh, images, but you're completely intrigued to know what they look like. So that's, I think, very good, suggestive uh, way of making this photo. And then as the fourth of this set, you once again have in the center the same artworks that you have come to know from the photos before, and a fantastic, interesting uh, composition of people. They're with their back at you, they're completely black, they're listening to somebody talking, you guess. And then there's one person on the left, which has a very interesting expression on her face and a beautiful uh, sense of white light behind her. So you get a, a story. It's, it's, it's really intriguing. The light is really nice because it's really dim and mysterious and the grain works very well here in these photos. And those were Rod Westwood's photos. And if I'm not mistaken, you saw the artworks of uh, Thomas Neukirch who lives mm. in Nihar, if I'm not mistaken. Very at ease. Yes. <laughs> I know so who. I really like that as a set. It really, I believe that if you take these three sets in a row, you can see the idea is quite similar. You take one uh, subject, whether it's a statue or an exhibition, and you try to cre make four photos that when you see them together, they uh, get your interest, interested more and more in the subject. So I really think that all worked yeah. out. I think the, the interesting thing about this set is that, and, and, and generally offsets, is that the whole is bigger and stronger than the single image. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the single image in, in any one of these, um, though they are, I like them a lot, I think uh, that you get a whole pi picture of the whole of the whole thing, of the whole story, um, much more from the set. Yes, yeah. I, 
I agree with that. But as I've said, because when you see the, the, the whole of the series, you start looking at each uh, individual photo with um, more in detail and you really interlink them. So I think it, it well, it, I really love this set, I have to say. And so uh, now we go on to the next and I'm gonna make a little story up here to say that we're looking at the set again, but of course I will focus on the individual photo because that's the idea now. And here we have, uh, well, something quite interesting, a red type of Kilroy was here, graffiti skull, um, in an abandoned uh, new built construction. The good thing about this, of course, is the desaturation of the whole thing. So you have a black and white photo and only the red in the skull, <laughs> making it completely come out. And well, that is what you would expect from this type of photo. Um, I think it's also interesting to see that the, the piece of concrete where the skull is uh, sprayed on is straight in front of you while the background is tilted. So at first I thought that this was uh, a pillar that was not in the angle of the other pillars, but I believe that it's actually a, a double exposure done in post-production where one photo of the uh, this particular pillar with all the detail is glued over another photo in a different perspective. But the result as a whole really, really works well. And now I'm coming to the little bit of the, the set idea. This is actually like, uh, what how art really started off at first, the cave paintings. Just trying to express, we are here, uh, we've been here and we're thinking about life and death. That's a little bit the idea. I hope you can get that. So art evolves and we start uh, using symbols like the alphabet, language, you know. And here we have also art comes outside. Here we have, I think a picnic table with a swing in the back and a pink anarchy sign. <laughs> I really like it. Because you have really uh, soft colors, the background also with the greens and, and the, the, the sandy colors, really soft, and the, the bright pink of the anarchy sign really jumps out. I think really good composition, really nice textures, and I can see that linked with the photo before that. I think it's a very, very good photo, once again. And then we take it one step further and art becomes, uh, I would say, uh, more important. The artists become important because we have actually the same thing here. Uh, text, language used to express uh, a complex idea. Here we have lights on, on this globe that's put uh, in the city somewhere with a nice bench behind, uh, next to it. <laughs> and uh, the foliage <coughs> and the city uh, in the background. Everything uh, in the foreground is really nice and sharp, good grain in the, the floor. And also interesting, uh, the globe itself has a little bit more color than the background. So that makes it really jump out. And once again, good composition, very good photo. So that already is another step in uh, art. Art becomes uh, a subject in itself. And then finally, it ends up in a museum where uh, you have to ask yourself, do I understand what the artist means? <laughs> and once again, really great photo. Uh, the, the artwork itself here uh, almost becomes the background for the person, but it really shows you something about how we deal with art and museums, uh, the, the wondering of what are we looking at. And I think here also the floor really works, giving you a sense of depth and the fact that the little two poles with the court, so you won't get too close to uh, the artwork, are placed perfectly really close to the edge of the photo. So it gives you a real sense of, wow, this is big, this is interesting, this is large. 
and the, the black and white pattern, it's a very well chosen artwork to make this set complete, I would think. And these were the photos of Howard Dixon. Okay, we can move on now. <clears throat> uh, here we have the back of a statue uh, with also one, as we saw with Pedro, a very interesting pattern in the bronze. Um, and the beautiful green colors uh, are even uh, accentuated by using the foliage uh, as an arch around uh, the image. And we see a city in the background with lovely clouds, a castle, a lot of things going on there, but it doesn't become disturbing or distracting. I actually believe if the photographer would have chosen a shallow uh, depth of field and making it fuzzy, that we would be actually more intrigued to figure out what's behind the statue. And now we have a, a composition that really focuses on the statue. So I think that's well spotted and it's a good image. Now here we have a, a different uh, approach and I think it's interesting because it's the only photo where we actually have the artwork and the subject of the artwork in one image. Um, I think that um, that helps you uh, being a little bit philosophic about what does an artist do to the subject. And as you can see, uh, the artist leaves out certain aspects like the high rise building in the back and the buildings on uh, the left, he leaves out. The light is slightly different. Um, the reflection in the water is a lot more dramatic than in real life, also a bit rougher. And for me, I thought this was, as an idea, interesting enough to try to make it a little bit more like, look for the seven differences. And so I added it so the canvas is a, a perfect square and I desaturated a little bit uh, the trees. Of course, this photo is not as good as the original one, but I think the original one also misses a little bit of action or drama, I don't know. But I think the idea of having a painting and, uh, well, I go back, a painting and its subject is quite an interesting idea to, to work with. <clears throat> now, this is a really, really pretty photo. A really good image. Um, I think everything in this photo works. You have an interesting uh, evening uh, sky with oranges and yellows. Then you have uh, on the bottom the line of the, the horizon with the trees that are a little bit diffused. And then you have the, the pebbles in the foreground that are really sharp. And then of course this fantastic metal shell that has all these beautiful deep uh, blues and purples in it and the whites because it's high contrast and it reflects the sky so you get a really beautiful color scheme and then there's of course the perforation at the top with the text um, and because uh, the, the evening sky comes through there it really lights up the, the words and makes this a very beautiful interesting photograph. I believe it's one of the best of uh, the challenge. And now we know who it was <laughs> who is doing the photos because we've seen this photo uh, two weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken. And so, well, it, it's a fantastic idea if you have a wireframe uh, statue and you have a beautiful sky, well, the photo nearly makes itself, I would say. Um, personally, I am I would have tried, I guess, to lose the grass in the foreground because I think it's difficult to get more detail in there. And if you make it darker, it becomes insignificant and not very useful for the photo. So maybe I should have tried to lose that and just have the water, the mountains and the sky. But as I said, very personal. But of course, a very good photo from Dave Hornsey. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, 
um, well, this is also an interesting statue, but I think immediately you see that um, something isn't working. And the first thing that isn't working for me is at the building on the right side, the white building with the red uh, rechas or whatever in it, and the tree, because it seems like to come from a different photo. It's completely without texture, but everything else in the photo has a lot of texture. And the base the statue is on, because of the material, it's the lightest uh, area in the photo. And so that gets all the attention, while the attention should actually be going to the person uh, that's kneeling and the flag. <clears throat> now, in the person, the texture and the colors are really interesting. The flag, same. And you have a very beautiful background. All the colors in the mountain, the greens, blues, purples, browns, everything, and a dramatic sky. So you ha actually have everything there to work with. But I think the block takes up too much attention. So here I also did a, some kind of edit. So I tried to desaturate the block a bit, cropped it tighter so you lose the building on the other side. But I think this photo is uh, too edited to look nice. But just to give you an idea of what the potential of uh, the, the statue actually is with that sky and the beautiful mountains in the background. <clears throat> ah, and here we have <clears throat> a pretty lady that I believe we've seen before. And I think it's very well spotted here that you have some kind of dialogue between the graffiti face and the lady. And I really like this photo. And I think there's a lot of elements that make this photo what it is, interesting. Uh, first, I think the flowiness of uh, the sleeve of the dress, because it's transparent, is a very good uh, choice, a good element. What I really, really like is the, the face of the, the lady. She doesn't look like she's posing. It looks very natural. She looks a little bit surprised, but she looks in the lens really great. And her skin is really beautiful. And uh, the fact that the wall also has the same flesh tines, I would say, really help with bringing out the face because it's a lot softer than the stones of the wall. And the fact that you have the shadow on her left side, making it, uh, giving it depth, even with the, the little bit of play of light here in the left uh, top, making it really interesting. And then you have, of course, the fact that she has these beautiful blue eyes and the blue necklace, which is reflected in the eyes of the graffiti face. So I think as a composition, really strong, really good. And now this is also very interesting because it's not what you would expect immediately if you hear the title Art in Public Spaces. But I think it's quite interesting that you know that these truckers all really like their trucks uh, painted and spray painted with artworks and as an image I think it's quite good because you have interesting colors not too much you have the reflection on the side of the uh, cabin reflecting the landscape and you have a little the purples and the reds and really bringing the things out the sun reflecting uh, on the left side here the only thing that I would have tried is to uh, tone down a little bit the, the parking area here on the left and this, maybe the entire uh, environment a little bit lighter, uh, a little bit uh, darker, I would say, that you have a little more detail. And I don't know if you've noticed, but here there's a man making a photo of us. So <laughs> I, don't know, I think that's actually quite a funny detail that while making a photo or looking at the photo, we're actually on camera too. So I thought that was quite a funny uh, element in there. <laughs> and now this is my favorite of uh, the entire challenge. I think both the subject and the photo itself are absolutely stunning. As for the subject, here we have 
actually the artist as the focus point and not the art, but it is maybe the well <laughs> most literal way of bringing art to a public space. We have this culture of people making these uh, child drawings literally on the streets and bringing something like the Mona Lisa out to everybody. So as a philosophical idea, really great. But then the photo itself, I think the, the, the figure itself is just beautifully uh, in the photograph. The pleats in the jacket and the trousers, the worn out shoes, it's really the focus because it's sharp, it's there, his, the half of his face, his hands, really great and it's slightly more uh, vibrant than the entire uh, background which has really beautiful gradients of all the colors in the, the, the floor tiling reds blues purples greens everything and the good thing is that they still come true in the mona lisa drawing which is also a lot more faded than the actual figure and I think the, the strongest thing about this is that you have this very graphic effect of the uh, side lines of the image, making it an amazing composition. I think this is really fantastic. And that was David Bryan. So thank you, David. That was really, really interesting. Ah. Finally, someone who does realize that Belgium has artists too, <laughs> the Smurfs. Now, I really, really like this photo because uh, for me, I immediately was thinking about, oh, wait a minute, is this a Jeff Koons artwork? No, 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 it's just uh, a garden variety of, of garden gnomes, I suppose. But the photo itself is just great because uh, the Smurf itself is, of course, very endearing. But you got the baby blue background, which is the perfect mix of the skin color of Smurfette and her dress. And I think the fact that you have the little flower pot uh, on the side that's cut off makes it complete. Because it says, oh, the important thing is the statue. And well, I can't help it. This is the, the, the context that the flower pot is there. If you would have put the flower pot in completely, it would be taking down uh, the focus of, of uh, the actual little statuette and leaving it out would have been too boring, I think. So I like this photo. It's a very funny take on the subject. Now here we have something similar, um, the kind of, I suppose, things you can buy at garden centers uh, to chicks in the garden. But I think in this photo, it's a little bit bland, the colors. And I think the, the deep depth of field really don't help. You see too much detail in the plants, in the grass, even in the background on the, the left side here. So it doesn't really work for me. So I did an edit <coughs> to see if you would have brought out the colors a little more and used a, a, a more shallow depth of field, it could have been a bit more intriguing, I think. <clears throat> and now here we have, uh, I think, an interesting artwork once again. I, it's a little bit more like the graffiti kind of thing, people doing things, I guess. And it emphasizes uh, how good we are at drinking beer. So it's an expression of, an artistic expression of what we do. Now, I think, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but the top of the statue actually reaches the top of the photo. And I think you should have given it a little more space there. And I would like to see some more detail in the sand actually, because I think it's a little too flat for me. And here we have another wireframe, although this one's a 3D wireframe quite clearly. Um, the idea of having the sea and the sky going through the dolphin, I think is great idea. But I believe that the dolphin needs a lot more light on it so that you can see a lot more vibrance uh, in the wireframe. Once again, I think this photo is a little bit too shallow, a little bit too flat. And these were the photos of uh, Rod Proud. 
Thank you, Rob. Okay, now we're uh, at something entirely different, umbrellas that are floating in the sky. Of course, you can see the construction of how it's made, but I think uh, the composition here is fantastic. You have in the center a yellow one, and then you have three different colors of the other umbrellas around, really, really good balance, and they're all cut off. So you get a very dynamic photo from something quite simple, I would say. And the fact that the sky is not even, but has these little, a little bit white clouds in it, gives it a lot more, uh, makes it a lot more interesting, a lot more alive. And I think that it's once again, a good idea of uh, what is art? Is this art? It's a very good interpretation. Yeah, that's art too. That's really well seen. And I think that the, the colors in the umbrellas are, are make it come alive a lot. So something entirely different here, uh, a person. Um, I think that what we're looking at is a sort of a manifestation, celebrating life, celebrating a certain aspect of life. And I think as a photo, it's a fantastic photo. I really like it. You've got really bright colors, the, the, the blue and purple fuchsia wig, uh, the makeup, the glitters, um, the eyelashes, orange in the background, shallow depth of field, really good photo. Um, but it, I think it could work as well in another challenge because I don't really see the art here as it is, but a really good photo. Ah, and here we have a fountain. Good choice, uh, I think. And once again, really interesting photo because you have something quite rigid, uh, brutalist type of fountain, but with the flowy water making it a lot more natural. And then for the composition, you have uh, the beautiful turquoise water horizontally uh, here in the bottom and the two figures, one posing for a photo, one taking a photo and a yellow a turquoise and a red detail standing person and then the red shoe here on the other person bringing that out. So making it a little bit of a story and I think that's good, but I, yeah, not too sure about the fountain itself. I feel like I wanted to see a little bit more reflection in the water, bringing the fountain out a little more, if that would be possible. I don't know. But good photo. And then uh, here we have music and a live uh, concert. I remember that from long ago that we had that. <laughs> no, I'm lying. I went to a concert yesterday. No, but also an interesting uh, idea to bring uh, music as art in public places. Um, well, hopefully in the future we can have a challenge uh, that concentrates on live music, dancing, things like that. But in this context, uh, I think a good choice to see, yeah, well, that's art in public places just as well. And a very good photo, of course. Uh, you have the smoke, the spotlights, you have the direction of one of the spotlights uh, with the pink light and then the blue and the pink in the face and the expression of a musician that's quite serious in what he's doing. So yeah, I think that's really good here. And those were Trevor's photos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we have architecture and uh, the, the next, uh, well, this photographer has done a few images to, I believe, make us wonder about the question, what is art in public places? How far can we take it? And quite obviously, architecture is one of the subjects that is art or should be art. Uh, but I think that maybe architecture could be a separate challenge in itself. But I think for this particular photo, it's very well chosen because it's quite a sculptural building with all the triangular terraces creating an organized chaos. And it, once again, black and white uh, works very well here because it uh, totally brings out the shapes, the reflections, yeah. the structure, 
really well seen. I really like also that you have two birds there flying uh, in the sky and at the bottom something is happening. There's a person with a dog and there's these uh, bags for uh, building debris. And I think it depends on your point of view, whether you think that that's an addition to the photo or a distraction. I actually like it because it really brings it into normal day life rather than making, uh, as we quite often see in architectural photography, <laughs> that it almost seems to come from a world that doesn't exist. Here we have an existing world and a very good use of perspective with the slightly uh, angled uh, lines going upward, uh, bringing the terraces out even a little bit more. Um, here we have, uh, I think, a light uh, construction. Um, as an idea, really, really like this. I think that it's really beautiful that you have the buildings uh, with the lights on in the windows in the background, a bit of reflection in the water of these buildings, and then the blue of the trees. But I think, uh, technically, and I'm not the best at that one, um, that you could bring out more detail in the trees, uh, more uh, shades of the blue, brighter, darker, to bring it a little more alive. But I think overall, it's, it's quite a beautiful uh, idea. Mm -hmm. photo. And then here we have the question, food, is food art? Well, I think that would be a nice debate to have uh, if we were in Terre uh, over a coffee or a glass of anything a cerveza or a glass of wine or anything, <laughs> but uh, now, apart from uh, the question, the idea uh, of this challenge is that you make a photo and make you look at something as art. And I am missing that a little bit in this photograph because it. I'm looking at a food photo and I'm not entirely taken by it as a food photo in the first place. And well, no, it, it doesn't really move me. The background's too cluttered. I'm not looking at an artwork. I'm looking at some kind of food, but okay. Now this totally different setting, once again, uh, one of the manifestations, it immediately I thought about, oh, is this Burning Man or something? I don't know if it is. I yes, think it is. I... Pardon? It is, from, it is from Burning Man. Okay, <laughs> so good guess that. I, I really like this photo because there's a lot going on and I like the, uh, the effect that is, it, it, it doesn't look posed. You have the little uh, part of a bicycle uh, here in the corner. You have the line in the back with people, buildings, Kentucky Fried. You have the butterfly there, people in crazy dresses and a crazy machine that you don't know what what it's going to do, what it's doing. So I really like this photo, but I think technically you could have enhanced it a little bit by making it a little bit um, harder, I think, but that's personal. But I think this is the best one of the four photos. I really, really like this one. And you did give it away, Peter. Uh, these were your photos. I really love this one yes. as well. I totally love that the expressions on, I take it students, their faces are just, <laughs> just adorable. And I would also like to thank you for your post on Facebook, because I think um, it is a bit of a philosophical uh, challenge. And I, well, you, as you can see on the results, people really took really different angles and I am really happy about that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I would like to thank you. Um, I'm going to drink a little, sorry. Here we have a photo that I'm guessing is Cuba. And as a composition, perfect, I would say. You have the yellow uh, of the wall coming at the left, at the right, uh, the two uh, sides of the window with uh, things painted on it. The, Via i fascisti americani dal Vietnam thing. It's quite interesting. Unfortunately, it, I think it's a blowout or a scan or something because we have a, a lot of uh, grain and 
unsharpness in it, which in this case for me doesn't work. But as a composition, uh, color scheme, the, the fact that you can look inside a window, that you see there's interesting things in the window, reflection. You've got a lot of things going on, really interesting colors, but for me in this case, the grain and the um, unsharp effect ruin it is exaggerated, but it could have been better, I guess. Because here we have a razor sharp photo of somebody uh, throwing pots, which is actually the creation of art. Also an interesting point of view to go with this challenge. And as from a photographical point of view, fantastic, of course, because you have the, uh, the moving uh, clay, which gives you uh, a radial blur and emphasizing the shape of the pot that's in construction. And you have the beautiful detail and light because of the clay sweat on the hands, a really beautiful texture. So you already have two very interesting textures and everything else, the t-shirt, the background, are a little bit grainy, mucky, really interesting. Beautiful black and white photo. Really well uh, done. And now, once again, a different take uh, on, on the subject, music. And as in a still life composition, um, we have the, the music, uh, the written music as a focus in the middle on the piano. You have the piano that also has a lot of detail in it with a little satyr here, I think, or and swans on the other side. I, but I think that what makes it interesting is that you have a, a fake symmetrical photo because you think you're looking at symmetry, but it isn't. It's always a little bit off. You have the light bulb on the left side here, and you see the light bulb on the right side is a little bit closer to the edge. Uh, the clock is not exactly centered, so it really, really works for me. Really beautiful colors, very soft, muted down. The only thing that I wonder is why can't we see the keys of the piano? Because that might have made it a little bit more interesting, or maybe that could have ruined it. I don't know, we can't see it, but I, that was a question that popped to my mind. And now here we have architecture again, but completely different, of course, uh, historical architecture. And I think the, the strength of this photo is once again, the symmetry, um, but also the fact that you have two families of light in one photo. You have the reflected light giving you very warm colors in the arches in the back and the front. And then in the opening in the middle, you have like a colder light coming from the sky. So that makes that photo a lot more interesting than if it would have been all in the same uh, warmer colors. And here you also have uh, some digital noise or grain, but in this case, I think it helps the atmosphere and the mood of the photo, given it, ah, uh, it's, it's something older, it's something more delicate. So quite a good photo. And those were Rob Palmer's photo. So thank you, Rob, and I also, um, very intrigued by this particular photo because I, I really like it and I just wonder if the, the moon uh, is a, a second exposure in this one or if it was really there because it seems almost impossible to me but it's a very beautiful photo. Okay so um, this is once again something different. Um, we have a very interesting contrast here between the metal sculpture, which is perfectly uh, polished and reflecting, and the trees that are really grainy and busy. So it's, as a photo, quite busy, but I think when you look at it for a little longer, you really start to appreciate the, the contrast between nature and sculpture. And, well, they shouldn't have put the sculpture up in the sky, so you can look at uh, the person's butt, I think, but that makes it also a little bit more um, funny and interesting. And I think all in all, the shapes are interesting enough to make uh, you look 
<laughs> quite a little bit at uh, this photo. And here we have something quite different and it's a photo I really like, but I have a lot of questions about this photo and that's a good thing because art is supposed to make you ask questions. And so this photo is art, I think, because it makes me ask uh, questions. I think the interesting thing is that you see something that looks like contemporary art and that is made out of the antlers and a crazy seal with a material that I can't see if it's burned wood or metal, but you have a classic statue uh, in the back that's uh, unsure because of the depth of field. And you also have a suggestion of it's a museum because on the left side, you can see like doors and things. So very intriguing. Uh, I suppose that there's people that would like to see the antlers uh, in completely. I think it's actually quite interesting that, that you see the face captured in the antler, but that it's got cropped off. And I think because of the very uh, muted color scheme with a lot of whites and blacks, a little bit of browns, I think quite an interesting photo. Ah. Um, here we see, I have to look it up because I never can uh, remember her name. Uh, oh God, I can't find it now. It's, well, it's a famous uh, Japanese artist, I believe a female, who does all these pumpkin things and polka dots. And as you can see, the, the person posing in front of it really dressed for the occasion to match uh, the artwork. And you have uh, her also reflected in uh, the big dot just behind her. I really like the fact that uh, the photographer dared to put the person so close to the edge of the photo, uh, creating a very bizarre kind of tension. The only thing that I think is a bit strange here is uh, the nature in the background. It's The green is a good contrast for uh, the bright red of the pumpkin, but I think if the background would be more blurred or, or desaturated or something, it would become even more surrealistic. So I think a very good uh, photo, maybe, you know, try to get it out a little bit more, I don't know. And something different once again, a beautiful Calder uh, sculpture, uh, mobile. Uh, Calder was, of course, one of the uh, artists who started kinetic art. And I always really liked his work. And as you can see in this photo, the shapes he uses are really great. It, it, they make a composition, it moves around in space. Here we have a still, but the composition already works because of the beautiful, softly curved shapes and the, the lines of the the hanging system of the mobile, connect them a little bit. And I think that in this photo, what makes it work extra is where well, they're usually in a museum or anything. And here, because of the black and white, you actually get uh, curves, curved lines and straight lines, referring a little bit to um, the geometrical abstract art that's from more or less the same period. And it's a lot more uh, toned down than the complete black of the actual mobile. And the fact that the, the shapes of the mobile are in the bottom half, so only taking up half of the photo, is I think an interesting choice here. And that, excuse me, that was Ellen Darlin. So thank you, Ellen. Now here we have something quite different. Um, these are very realistic uh, sculptures, well, one in this case, uh, in a city environment. So interesting as a photo because at the beginning you're a little thrown off because you're not, you don't know if you're looking at the statue or at a person. Um, and I think it, it's interesting because you see the raindrops on the face and that's exactly what this girl's doing because she has this uh, bright yellow uh, plastic jacket on to keep the rain uh, 
away from her, but she likes to put her face in the rain. The only thing that um, bothers me is that you have these uh, washing lines on the top of her head that kind of like distract me a little bit. But the softness of the, the background, uh, as opposed to the really bright yellow of the jacket, for me, makes it a stronger photo. And now we have a second one of these uh, sculptures. And I think this one's even in more interesting because it's a lady in a bathing suit. And because of the rain, it looks like as if she's just come out of the swimming pool with the water still dripping from her skin. But then you think there can't be a swimming pool in this kind of weather with these buildings in the back. So I think that is really funny and, and a good idea. I would have, however, I'm not a big fan of cloning things out or doing things, but in this case, the name tag of the artist, I would have taken out to make the photo a little more, uh, well, classy or something. I would have taken that out. And here we have uh, a similar idea, a lady uh, who does a, a jump, but in, it's a bronze statue. And in this case, I think, even though I, truly love the angle in which uh, the sculpture is taken. I think in this case, the background does bother me a little too much. So I once did, uh, again, did a little edit. And by making it uh, a little more darker, uh, adding the black a bit, I think it takes out the background a little bit. But as you can see, it, it's a choice. I think it's an interesting photo, but you know, the background disturbs me. Now here, it's quite the opposite. The background is perfect for bringing out this uh, bike ride to the moon, I would say. All these yellow bikes and the, there's a wire, a barbed wire running through it. So it's an intriguing artwork with a lot of detail. But because the fact that it's monochrome yellow and you have the flags running through it, it doesn't become too busy. It, it, of course, it is busy, but it doesn't become uh, chaos. You can look at the details, the saddles, the wheels, really interesting. Yeah. Only minor thing, in the bottom you have two little parts of a building that in this case, it would have been better if you could have avoided them. But I think a really nice photo and, and the brightness of the yellow uh, against the blue sky, really nice. And that was Janet McPherson. Thank you. Now this, once again, something completely different and maybe also a little bit philosophic because we have a wooden woodsman in the woods. Now, I think that the idea of the photographer here was to bring out the whole idea of wood. Wood as a material that you can sculpt in, in a setting where the wood comes from. So you have a, a tremendous amount of textures that are very, very busy. And I think you have to imagine this photo printed. It would be a lot softer printed than it is on your screen right now. Because at, my first impression was that I really had to concentrate to have the outlines of the figure against the background because it's, there's a lot, a lot going on. But I think it's good that you have the, the way wood is sculpted. You have all the marks of the chisels uh, in the arms and you have the, uh, the lines of the wood going through the sculpture, which is reflected in the tree bark on the right side. So an interesting photo. And here we have something similar, uh, a wolf. I can't really make out the material. It does look like a ceramic material or any anyway something that's been sculpted by hand and then uh, baked or uh, made in bronze i don't know because of the choice for black and white you really go for the texture and you have the the tree on the left side which is um, of course unsharp and the background which is a lot more geometrical and i think that makes the photo extra interesting. 
but I do miss a little bit of depth in the sculpture itself. It, it's, from an abstract point of view, really nice, but I can't really make out the shapes well enough, I think. So I've enhanced it, but once again, I think this is too aggressive. I prefer the softer tones. And now here, very good photo, because it's quite a dramatic statue with a person with a really dramatic face, holding a book up, telling us something. And the light on the statue is just stunning. You have the beautiful uh, lines in the rope, which go in an S shape up to the face. You have the shade, uh, the shadow of the book falling over his mouth, but leaving his cheek uh, in the light. And of course, the very soft gray background uh, that the sky provides. So I think if you compare that to the two photos before that, uh, here it, it's, it feels a lot more natural, a lot more easy to, to look at and distinguish things. Interesting photo. And now this, once again, really great because these are also uh, expressions of who we are, what we're doing, uh, putting up signs with here uh, a year, uh, uh, the, the symbol of herald, uh, heraldic uh, things, the, the top of uh, a Roman uh, pillar, everything has a meaning. And, and when you single it out, just the top of that, uh, well, it's not a statue, but a signpost, it shows you how much detail uh, is put in it. Beautiful light, the funny face in the middle, interesting photo. And these were uh, Kathy Ailes' photos. So, now this is of course cheating because this is a real statue, <laughs> it's a living statue. And I think that's a good idea, uh, taking a living uh, statue as a, a art object because it's something that we're quite familiar with. And this one's interesting because it's entirely painted golden, making it quite interesting from a photographic point of view. But as a composition, I think it doesn't really work. I feel like the kit in the bottom, well, I don't know if he's figured it out. I think he has, but he doesn't look too surprised or enthusiastic could be I think with uh, this uh, particular um, subject you could have done something more exciting but just my point of view and this is a photo that I can't really place I think it's because that the colors of the actual statue are a little bit faded they're a little bit uh, pale and so for me, this is, well, definitely not my favorite photo of the set. I think as a subject, it's quite interesting, but I, yeah, it, it just doesn't really move me a lot. I don't really like the expression in the sculpt, uh, the lady's face. And yeah, it's really kind of like boring colors to me. Sorry, I hope I don't offend you. Because in this photo, it's quite the opposite. The colors are really uh, alive. And it's almost a trompe l'oeil. You really think that the guy, because it's a photo on, on the right, could be just sitting there as a muse for what the artist on the left side is doing. And you have the, the maps in the background thinking, oh yeah, I'm somewhere else now. <laughs> so I think as a photo, it's really funny. I, and I like the light uh, in the photo it, because it, it's a warm light, but you've got a lot of blues in it. And maybe, you could have had a little bit more of the instruments that the person is using uh, to add to the story. But I think because you have the expression of the, the figure on the right with the fish in his hand, it, yeah, it tells a story and quite funny. <clears throat> and now uh, this is a, a contemporary uh, artwork. And I like the, the, the angle of, in which it's taken because it's, oh, what's going on here? Unfortunately, I think 
if we would have had a little bit more light in the center of the photo and we could see a little bit more that we're looking at monstrous hands or animal hands and we could make out a little bit more of the face it would be more intriguing but as an idea of, of a subject i think it's quite interesting but as a photo uh, needs a little bit more detail where the action is which is the face and the hands i believe and those were goran Abert's uh, photos uh, here we have uh, graffiti in a town or a city which is of course quite obviously art in public places or spaces and um, i think the good thing about this photo is that there's a a warmth in uh, the actual graffiti painting and in the light in the streets and that it's completely abandoned so you get the idea that the monster has actually scared away everybody and they left a little uh, they left a coke tin there to <laughs> prove that they run that they had to run because there there's a lot of detail in here but it's very balanced and the center is the graffiti so it works really well for me and this is pretty much uh, a comp the opposite of the, the, the photo we had before because it's black and white the light feels really cold the face of the sculpture looks sad or troubled and I think a very interesting choice of shallow depth of field here because you can see the Renaissance buildings in the back and a second figure that also seems to have a quite serious look on her face and it gives you a sense of depth and it does make me think of movies or film noir or kind of thing because you really have the beautiful texture of the uh, cape around the face that is so much rougher than the face itself. So I think interesting choices here. And here I took the liberty of making a little white uh, frame around the photo because I used black background. Um, I wanted you to see that uh, the choice of this cropping is very, very interesting because you have a nearly perfectly black background, a little bit of light uh, here on uh, the bottom of uh, the statue and you have a really lot of interesting things going on inside the statue. <coughs> I think it's a glass uh, statue because of the detail and uh, the fantastic way that the, the textile uh, that is suggested flows but you have the feeling as if light is coming through and I think choosing to crop the top off and putting the bottom really close is a very deliberate choice to really let us appreciate the delicacy and the fr fr fragility of uh, the actual sculpture, uh, sculpt. And here we have a, a Rodin, of course, and I think very classical. You the focus on the face and the hand, um, the light coming on the statue, uh, giving it its depth, uh, even wide background. I think it's very okay as a photo, but I got a feeling that I've seen photos like this before. So I don't think it's the most original one, but it's a very good photo. You can see the detail in uh, the bronze. You can see the expression of the face interesting in itself but not it doesn't jump out to me and these were Mijo's photos so thank you Mijo and also this one is of course very interesting because it's uh, a night photo and the light comes from the bottom of the sculpture which is a different take on things this is a very interesting photo for me very dramatic um, and a very, very good composition because here you use the, the upward perspective as a plus and you have the horseman who has a blue cone over his head. 
and at first I thought, well, it's probably a little prank by by just as we had with the photos in the beginning of the graffiti and the anarchy sign. It's some kind of anarchy uh, students pulling a prank. It could well be because you see in uh, the freeze here you have modern art. It could be that it's an actual artist who was paid and commissioned to do this. <laughs> um, now, I think that what makes this photo is the, the colors and the grain. At first, I didn't really like the grain in uh, the photo, but uh, having looked at it several times now over the week, I actually really begin, begin to like the grain. And the fact that it brings out the blue of the cone and the colors that are going on here in the freeze, um, it really works. The thing that I'm not so sure about is the treatment of the sky. I believe this is uh, uh, the different clouds filter in Photoshop that has been used to alter the sky. And it is dramatic, but I'm not 100% sure about how it's done. And so I took the liberty of making an edit. As you can see, if you take out the grain, you also lose the sharpness, so it really doesn't work. But I think a black uh, sky might have done the trick. Oh, I'm sorry, I jumped away. But I think this is definitely one of the most intriguing photos of the entire challenge. And I, of course, the original one is way better than what I tried. <clears throat> now here we have the same sky effect, uh, bringing out the lines around the actual subject, maybe too much for some people. Um, I think there's two things that make this very, very interesting. I guess we all have seen Egyptian art before, and you either like it or not. I'm really intrigued by it. And I think the good thing here is that you have uh, not a classical view, but you have uh, three interesting elements. You have the pharaoh uh, sculpture in the center with uh, the uh, hieroglyphs, hieroglyphs, I don't know how you pronounce it in English, on the bottom. Then a detail of uh, a pillar on the right and a set of pillars on the left. And then the people in here giving you the sense of scale. But the black and white ef effect and the treatment, the post-production treatment of the photo make it almost like a pencil drawing with a lot of uh, texture, things going on. It's a bit busy, but I actually really, really like it. But I'm quite sure that there's people that will not like this. But for me, really interesting take on both the subject and the photo. And here we have something quite similar. There's a lot of uh, detail, like we also had in uh, one of Cathy's uh, photos. You have the foliage, which is very busy. You have the grain of the rougher stone in which the sculpture on the left side is uh, made. And then you have an extra story on the right side with uh, the horse and uh, the figure on the horse and two people posing by that sculpture. So all in all, it seems a bit busy, but I think once again, if you have this on a printed uh, version, it will look a lot softer and you will be able to appreciate all the shades in it and the grain. And I'm not sure if it's uh, because of the screen, but I got a feeling that it could be a wee bit sharper. But I don't want to judge on that because uh, with also with the transfer uh, and the, the, the resizing of photos, things can go wrong, but it might, for me, it could have been a wee bit sharper. <clears throat> and this is also one of the most intriguing photos for me. Unfortunately here, I think something has really gone wrong in uh, resizing or I don't know, because you have a lot of really big uh, pixelation in the center here, which makes it uh, a bit bizarre for me. You also have the same uh, over at the right side. But I think the sculptures themselves and the composition chosen to, to show them is really great. <clears throat> because I think we're looking at uh, two door handles that are actually uh, stylized human shapes. And 
because of the angle, you really have the line here showing that you see two legs. And here you see the back of somebody's legs. So a really intriguing subject. Um, uh, putting it against uh, the light coming from the back and the detail of the stones on the right and of the, the centerpiece is a really good idea, but I'm too troubled by the pixelation of the photo. And that makes me a little bit sad because I really love this one. And that was uh, Angel's photo. So Angel, thank you very, very much for your photos. I really, really enjoyed them. And I really enjoyed looking at them and I hope the other people will too. And also this one uh, is very interesting because as you can see the, the, the thing that you use to put litter in is actually also these days a reason to make art, which I think is interesting. And of, well, the whole photo with the mountains, the sky, really great photo. And now here we have a very interesting choice of cropping because it's cropped right at the bottom of the artwork and right at the top. It's telling you this is what you're supposed to be looking at. A very huge pencil somewhere in a town, in a city. So that's an interesting choice and an interesting crop. And of course you have the traffic sign which <laughs> reflects the color of the pencil. But I believe if you would have uh, underexposed a little bit the colors would have been a little bit more dramatic and it would work even better. And it's completely different to this photo because here the softness of the tones of the, the faux marble in the background and the skin of the person are so soft, so nice, so good to look at that you almost forget that on the right side there's a sculpture who doesn't doesn't have any color, it's only white. It once again looks like a dialogue of which one of the two just got petrified. So I think it's, as an image, quite interesting. Um, and then here, I really love this image as well because it does uh, show us a form of art. Uh, the, uh, statues of the Marys and the saints and the Christ that we see well, all around here in Europe. And then what happens to them? It, there's somewhere and there's goats around. So as a composition, I think you might have tilted it a little bit. So because I feel like uh, it's not perfectly even. And I'm a little bit concerned with the light. I feel like it, it, it's a little bit like a 1950s photograph. So in a way I really like it, but I, it doesn't feel completely natural to me. So I tried, if it were a slide bar, I would, I would have I've slid it all the way to the other side. So I think it should be somewhere in the middle of the original and what I've tried to do. But as a photo, I think it's interesting. <clears throat> and here we have uh, a much more poetic approach. I think this is uh, an old uh, wooden sculpture that's been polychromed. And you see a, a lot of uh, crackler and I don't know if it's, that's the right word, but wear and tear of the, the sculpture. And I think that it, that's exactly what makes it interesting. The, the soft tones, the, the texture, the softness, the delicacy of it, and the fact that you chose to focus on a detail, the hand holding the top of the violin. And even if I wouldn't have known uh, who took the photo, I found a little hint because it does remind me of a photo um, that was uh, sent in for the abstract challenge. I hope I got that right. Uh, Irmala, thank you very much really good uh, photos here. And here we have, I think, um, a photo that was exactly what I had envisioned if uh, we came up with the, the challenge. Just taking a, a statue somewhere in town and bringing out all the qualities of it by choosing an interesting angle and the 
uh, I would say, best choice of depth of field for that particular statue and angle. Because here we have the foot coming straight at you, uh, the movement of the lady, and the face still sharp and an even background. Beautiful texture in, in uh, the dress. So I think this is really what I was looking for. I really love this photo. And same here, fantastic photo. Unfortunately, we already know who made it because Emilio, you signed your photo here. <laughs> but, but I don't think it's, it's uh, too much of a problem that we know it's Emilio because here, once again, something I really like is that you have uh, geometrical surfaces uh, in this photo or in a photo. You have the two triangles at the bottom giving it a base you have the texture of the two walls um, <clears throat> colliding, and then you have the clouds in the sky as a perfect, interesting background for the sculpture, which is, in this case, a little bit small in the photo, but the fact that you have, uh, that you have all this extra information makes you appreciate the statue, I think, even more, because it's beautifully styled, it has a beautiful uh, sheen on it and it reflects the sky a little bit. Really, really pretty photo. And here, entirely different, but I think a very uh, straightforward take on the subject. Art in public spaces. Uh, art markets are, of course, the place if you want to photograph art in public spaces. And you have a good composition. You have, I can't be, it can't be denied, this is the artist sitting there. And you look at this artwork on the other side that flows uh, into the back of the photo on a wall that goes in. Dramatic clouds, interesting light because it's warm and cold at the same time. You have all the deeper blue and gray tones and even the floor, which is beige, has a, a cold effect in it bringing out the paintings that are on uh, on display here. I think really, really well seen, really good composition, nice light. And a different take once again, black and white. Uh, I take it this is one of the big uh, head sculptures that we know from the Ibanez, uh, from Ibanez. And the light source on top of it, uh, giving a very specific light on this face and explaining the strange angle of this photo. I think once again, really interesting photo. And we already knew it was Emilio. So thank you, Emilio. I think really, really good photos. <clears throat> thank you. <laughs> thank you for, for letting me uh, talk about it. This is uh, architecture, I take it once again. Um, and I think as a photo, it's very interesting because uh, within the, the subject, it does raise a whole number of questions in a sense of, ah, is this art? Yes, it's art. What does it tell me? Uh, we got a lot of people reflected in there. Uh, we have a, a shape that's uh, a repetition um, very busy, but because of the tonality, it doesn't feel uh, disturbing at all. It does bring up a lot of philosophical questions. Oh, how many people are there? Is it about individuality, about the group? I think really interesting. And we have again the symmetry here, uh, making it very interesting because the composition is symmetrical but what's going on on the left and the right side is actually completely different because of the reflections. So a complex photo, but a fantastic view. And uh, we are dealing here with a photographer who really knows how to work with composition because here she seemingly uh, takes um, a bottom half and a top half Within the bottom, you have the, the stones. I take it this is the 
um, Jewish cemetery in Berlin where you have all these stones. I think it's that. I'm not sure. I haven't been there. And you yes, have... it's it's the Holocaust Museum. Yes, okay. I thought yeah. so. Um, and you have the the pine tree uh, in the top, making it very interesting and very in because of the colors and the juxtaposition of the two things together. And here I've done an edit just to show you how well this photo is composed, because you have the perspective in the top. And I hope you can see the lines good enough. You actually have uh, the golden ratio completely in the photo. So I'm going back now to the photo. Fantastic photo, really nice textures. Really, uh, I'm really impressed with this one. And this one, <laughs> oh, you just want to be there, don't you? <laughs> you just want to lie on the cushions. Uh, once again, the composition is yeah, fantastic because you have actually <clears throat> a little more than the bottom half with this beautiful indigo blue and the person that's closest to you has also dark uh, clothes on. So it blends in with the bottom. And then you have the action uh, with the two projections and a very busy background in the back. But because of the, the softness of the bottom, it doesn't take over the photo. So it gives you the opportunity to really appreciate what's going on with all the flowers and the crosses and the screens. Really good, really interesting. And then here, this one is just amazing. The staircase with uh, the letters, uh, the text on it, which is the artwork itself. Uh, you either like that or not, but I think the way the, the, the staircase is photographed gives you a whole sense of, wow, this is style, this is art, this is quality, the light is fantastic. The fact that you have uh, a focus on the top with the light and the uh, uh, quadros, uh, this uh, exposed at the top, and the lady, the person in there, uh, in well, a jeans blue and a darker sweater, which blends in fantastically with the tones of the concrete and the metal railing. Just amazing, really great, fantastic. So thank you very much, Leon. I really, really enjoyed your photos. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. I'm sorry, I had to drink a little. Uh, here we have something very interesting because it is a trompe l'oeil, the entire photograph. I believe we're looking at uh, a painting a painting on a wall, a street art uh, work uh, of a Christ figure that does something with his hands that a normal Christ figure wouldn't be doing. And then there's a bicycle parked against it and a black cord in front of it. So once again, central composition, um, and it really works again. Uh, the tonality of the photo, fantastic. Light blues, a little bit of beige in it. Really good, uh, interesting artwork, I think. And all of a sudden it becomes very lighthearted because you have the bike parked against it and the cord in front of it. Really interesting. <clears throat> and now, this is once again different. Uh, it could be a uh, Jan Favre uh, sculpture, I'm not sure. Um, it's definitely one of the sculptures that's made in a very, very reflective uh, metal. And the effect that you get is that it reflects all the color that's around it. And so here you've got deep reds, golden uh, colors in the bottom, and then the colder uh, colors in the cheek and the hair. And you get a very sharp line around the face, <laughs> you can see the expression. I think it really works because also a very good use of shallow depth of field here. And here, I think the photo is taken from a very interesting point because the shadow actually gives you the story of what you're supposed to be seeing and then you look at the sculpture and you realize that from this point of view, you cannot really see who has been attacked. Um, 
the background really great. Uh, the water in the front, interesting. Here, once again, you have uh, we've, what we've seen before with the, the bronze sculptures is that you get um, a digital noise in it with a lot of uh, red, blue, green dots. And I suppose for me, it doesn't really disturb me, but I can imagine that other people might think that you should try to get uh, rid of that. But as a composition, really nice tight crop because the sculpture is really close to the edge and the shadow has a little bit more space, making it the focal point of the photo. Really good choice here. And here I think a lot of people uh, will be really in, find it endearing. The child next to the sculpture, uh, the difference of expression between, uh, I guess it's a poet or an artist who's been depicted, who is looking very uh, deep into thoughts and the girl thinking, what's this guy doing? With, of course, a red jacket on, making it pop out and a very beautiful building in the back. So an interesting photo, all in all. And these were uh, Jean's uh, photos. And she also chose a very interesting uh, photo for her uh, name tag photo, I believe. And here we have something that I think is really uh, well spotted and well worked on as a composition. Because it looks once again like something symmetrical because you have the reflection of Velasquez's uh, graffiti painting reflected in uh, the window. And in the window, there's a lot of other things going on, making you, once again, a little bit philosophical. But because you have the pillar in the middle with the, the little uh, mosaics on it, you actually, once again, have a golden ratio going on here. Because you have a square uh, on the left side and the rectang uh, rectangle where you have the face on the right side, that's golden ratio. So very well chosen. And I think uh, the verticals are all vertical here. Really neat. Uh, it's really needed in this photo to bring it out. And of course you have the, the fact that the, the colors of the actual painting are very, very strong. The hard yellow, black, white. And then you have the actual uh, stones of the building and the reflection in the window with a lot more softer tones. So I think a very interesting photo. <coughs> a fountain once again. Uh, you know in Belgium we do have a similar fountain but only with one person. <laughs> I think uh, you yeah, have funny photo, a funny sculpture and I guess that uh, the photographer had to wait quite a long time to get nobody else in the photo. And it really works as a composition because you have a lot of detail. Uh, you have the trees uh, on the right. And then you have, of course, uh, this building in the back that actually says where these guys should have been going to do what they're doing. So I think, yeah, a lot of uh, humor in this photo interesting composition, not spectacularly, uh, uh, I mean, it's not anything unexpected in, in uh, the composition, but it works for me because of the uh, softness of the tonality. Now, this one has me a little trouble because I get the, the, the fun of the, the brushes and the uh, paint cans in the bottom as uh, a frame for a window of an art gallery. But I find what I'm seeing inside the window doesn't really intrigue me enough to make it, yeah, make me want to go inside. So for me, this one, I'm a bit confused. I don't know if I, I think I'm missing a point somewhere, but I'm sorry, it's just not exciting enough for me. Now here, I get uh, entirely the idea of wanting to have the entire sculpture in and the background, because you have the mountains, you have the water, you have uh, the, the stones uh, in, in the back of the sculpture where you're standing. 
and you look at a wooden sculpture of, of somebody who's very cheerful, and it's a little bit of caricature, you have lovely tones uh, in the wood of the sculpture. And it's, it's I would have liked, uh, if you take this one, that you would do the same as we've seen in the very beginning of the presentation, where people take more photos of the same uh, sculpture, because I would have liked to see a little bit more of the actual, <clears throat> actual expression in uh, the face. I think it's really funny. I think there's a lot of detail in the sculpture that uh, is uh, subject enough to make another photo again. And those were Harry's photos. So thank you, Harry. I think quite a diversity of, of things you've shown us. And also this is quite an interesting sculpture in itself, I think. Uh, now here we have uh, an ICM photo, or maybe um, not ICM, but UCM, uh, unintentional camera movement. And we have uh, a phase of a sculpture that's, well, because of the ICM blurred, and I guess there's an artificial light coming from the light, and that it's already evening. Um, because of the blurriness of the photo, it becomes a bit uh, more dramatic. You don't know if it's pain or relief from pain or I'm not really sure. And also again, uh, digital noise in the background here that I don't know if it bothers me or not. I can't quite say, um, but I like the colors in this one. And here another Christ. And as <clears throat> we've seen with the photos of the, the uh, photorealistic sculptures. I think it's the rain here that makes it stand out. Of course, also you have the unnatural color of the Christ. We're not used to seeing gray, bluish Christ figures. Um, interesting crop. The rain does make it special, I would say. And here we have another um, More pour la France, I think the background says. And the funny thing in this photo is that in the left side, you have a shadow of probably another sculpture that looks like it's about to attack the rather uh, dramatic guy in the front who's apparently dying. And here we have, um, well, it's quite a bit disturbing, I think. We have a sculpture that's been caught in a net and we have a decapitation going on on the right side. And the figure on the left side is really strange. I don't know, it's in a strange angle, really not quite sure what's going on here. Um, and of course, that were just my photos. So that's why they looked a bit strange, I think. <clears throat> Here we have something, uh, once again, a set. I'm sorry to give that away already because um, we have a, a sculpture to uh, commemorate the war with the poppy in the center, it's quite clear. And it's very simple, it's just uh, a gun put in the ground with a helmet on it in a natural setting. And I think the strength of this photo is that it's not black and white and the poppy, because you, if you look close, you see there's still color in the background and in the sculpture itself. There's a little bit of red and greens and blues left in it. And I think the background uh, really helps to give it the poetry it needs. And here we have a similar thing in the sense that it's a, a war memorial or a sculpture, but here we have three realistic soldiers on a, a, a base and we still have the, the red puppy uh, circles coming back. And once again, the background really makes it a little bit of drama in the sky, uh, the mountains 
a little bit muted in the back. Really, really pretty photo. And again, really interesting sculpture. Once again, a war memorial, I think here, uh, commemorating the women of the armed forces. And I think that the person uh, walking here in the photo uh, makes it a lot more uh, relative, uh, makes it back to real life again. But a very, very good composition once again, I think. I suppose you could make the same photo without uh, the actual person in it, a little bit more tilted then, a little bit more angled. A really good choice of subject. And then this is the one that doesn't fit in the series because it's uh, uh, the Mujer de oops, uh, Ceron, no, a little bit further from where we live. Really good photo, really good light. Um, but this one is not a war uh, memorial photo, if I'm not mistaken. And these were Ashton's photos. So thank you, Ashton. I think a really good set in the sense of four really good photos. Um, okay, architecture again, but this time a, a detail of the architecture. We see a Art Nouveau Jugendstil uh, facade, and we're focusing on um, the fact that in that period, everything about architecture had to be designed. Even the bottom of this, uh, 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 how do you call it? Uh, the outbuild. Yeah, uh, but that's not an English word. So you have a lot of um, interesting details here in the bottom. And even uh, the, the, you have the stained glass windows. An interesting photo and once again, a different take on uh, the subject. So, okay. Same here, we have the, the railing of an Art Nouveau uh, building. Um, I'm not too sure here. I think it's a little bit over-processed because the contrast between the light that's hitting the actual railing and the sh black of the shadows is a bit hard. And I think that the texture in the actual uh, stones of the stairs, a little bit hard for me. I think it could have been a little softer. And here we have another uh, sculpture of a satyr and a lady uh, doing a flamenco in the back and uh, because she has the castanets and a building. So I think the angle is really interesting. The fact that you desaturated uh, the building and maybe even the sculpture really works because you get a greenish photo. The only thing that I would have done is bring out uh, the face of the lady a little bit more because that's where your attention should have be going to. But as a composition with the angled building and the sky and all the motion in um, the statue, really well chosen. And now this is also very interesting because you have a, a floating lady there with her hair going somewhere. It almost looks like uh, someone in a hypnosis show that you can put up like a plank. But then you've got a uh, the light painting around it, making it a lot more interesting. And I think it's very well seen because um, everything else in the background is graphic. The railing, perfectly horizontal, vertical lines, the bricks behind it, and then a really good crop of uh, the railing behind that on top. And uh, also an interesting choice to make it blue and white instead of black and white and having the pink and the red of the light painting around the sculpture. And those were Marlene's photos. So Marlene, thank you, really interesting. And then here we are, uh, I believe at um, the last photographer of the challenge. And I think we can guess <laughs> who we're looking at really bright colors, really busy, but it works. It's very soft uh, to look at. It doesn't look 
overcrowded, even though they're very bright uh, colors. You have the people uh, with your back, with their backs to the pho photographer, and the face in the middle, the bikes, a lot going on, but really, really interesting. And then once again, uh, graffiti, but I think the strength of this photo is that the perspective sucks you into the bottom center where you have the blue mysterious light and two people by a van doing something, probably something illegal, very interesting. And all the rest is really bright colors, reds, yellows, everything going on. A really good uh, composition once again, a lot of detail. Good work in a black and white with the way of <coughs> spots here. Really good. Uh, here we have again a street musician, but I'm afraid again here that it's either a blow up of a photo or something because uh, in the skin and the beard and especially in the neck, um, you get like a, a very strange grain, something that kind of like bothers me there. But the fact that you've got a lot of color in the background and the softness of the skin tone in the face and the black of the neck, <laughs> really good choice. And then here we have a, a light uh, installation, Moscow or something, I would guess, with, with the typical... Uh, <laughs> a lot of people in the front giving you a, a good idea of the scale and the depth of... Um, the whole installation and really bright colors and a perfectly black sky. <clears throat> Once again, I think there's a certain grain that I don't really like in this photo. And of course, <laughs> we could have guessed that those were Rachel's photos. Thank you, Rachel. I really liked them. And I like this photo very much as well. So that were all the photos. So. Very quickly, uh, I will show you my selection and then we can uh, round it off. I really liked this one because it's a story in itself. Uh, and I really like the colors in this one. It looks very natural to me. It's a really good photo. Uh, in the same category, the artist and his work. I adore the light in this one because it's intriguing. It's cold and warm at the same time. Uh, interesting person. Very good perspective. Thank you, Emilio. Really good. I really adore this photo from Ashton. Really dramatic, but really soft at the same time. And of course, Leanne, fantastic photo. Really, really love this. Of course, Harold's photo, uh, because it's a really good composition, really worked on it with, with the little bit of color in the globe. Fantastic. The seashell, really one of my favorites. Beautiful colors here, love it. And Rachel's uh, perspective of the, the graffiti walls. And Jean's Christ, really lovely, really great. Uh, Mijo's, well here, I put it a little bit smaller because I didn't have uh, time because I put the selection in this morning. It really gives you all the nice lights and details in the sculpture. And then uh, my top three, I think uh, Rod's set, really fantastic. Really, I love the mood, I really adore it, like the grain. And then my number two, it's a very difficult choice, but I truly adore this photo. I really love it. Thank you, Angel. And I think that the best photo for me from the challenge is uh, this one. So a very great photo from David Bryan. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And we're back to uh, Rod, I think. Yeah, thank you, Frank. Thank you for- Thank you, uh, thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Frank. Thank you.